Hi, I'm Bill Blaine, strategist here at Shard Capital, and welcome to this week's Shard Light Bite. Today, we're going to talk about Apple and big tech. Now, it used to be that a new Apple launch announcement was once a very, very big thing. Steve Jobs would whip around the stage, whipping up the crowd into a frenzy, demonstrating whatever new bright, shiny thing Wismo was the latest must-have piece of tech. Now, Steve Jobs is long gone, and yesterday's launch of the new iPhone 13 was a, a pretty tame affair, very, very professional. But we all know, whatever wonderful, bright, shiny things Apple unveils, they will be bought by the container ship fool, global supply chains permitting, of course. Years ago, in the dark days immediately after Steve Jobs died, I wrote some hopelessly ill-informed analysis of Apple's future. I predicted it was a bubble about to burst. My thesis was very well argued that without Steve Jobs' disruptive vision, endlessly inventing new marketable, mark fashionable concepts in tech like iPods, and innovating exciting new products that would get us all emptying our wallets, Apple was doomed to be overtaken by newer, nimbler, more inventive, more fashionable, and cooler competitors. I couldn't have been more predictable and orthodox in the way I put together that article, and I was completely wrong. How could Apple possibly command any extraordinary market value in a constantly evolving tech sector when even when Steve Jobs died 10 years ago, it was already a mature, effectively prehistoric in millennial terms, company that was founded a way back in 1976. The evidence of the last 37 years since the original uh, mobile telephone brick suggests that phones are a brutal, fast-evolving market. We've seen names like Motorola, who launched the first one, Nokia, Ericsson and Crackberry, or Blackberry as it's properly called, effectively disappeared, while a host of other producers are of statistical insignificance. i got to get new teeth here, even though they sell more phones cheaper. Today, Samsung builds brilliant handsets, but it's a runner-up in a one-horse smartphone race. I thought that Apple was doomed to similar evolutionary obsolescence. Wrong. Apple not only remains dominant, but it's effectively become its own unassailable monopoly of being Apple. You see, I reckoned without understanding the Tim Cook effect, Tim Cook, the CEO of Apple, no new disruptive products under his tenure, but what he's done is expanded Apple's multiverse of opportunities. He's built a much larger ecosystem, which Apple is successfully farming for increasing revenues, and that ecosystem has developed on the back of an exponential explosion in tech opportunities. Now, as I said, Cook's been CEO for the past 10 years, and he's just made the headlines because he got a 750 million bonus for his success quadrupling sales and leading the firm to the top of the global value table. He's generated a return of 33% per annum for investors. That's double the return of the S&P 500. He's sitting now, or Apple is sitting now, in an enormous cash pile, yet it's still spent $450, $450 billion buying back its own stocks. Apple can literally buy anything. But it's no longer just a maker of bright, shiny tech like iPads and iPhones and uh, wearable watches. It's become a business ecosystem with the cloud, music, and app subscriptions. It's bundling all these services and tying customers into them. It's a digital wallet, wallet via Apple Pay. It's a streaming service. It made $54 billion last year on its services business, which is now larger than the $40 billion it made from iPhone sales. 
Its wearables, like watches and buds, come in at 31 billion per annum. Now these are earnings, are all sustainable. There are around 1 billion iPhones in circulation, and it's reckoned they're recycled upwards around every three or four years. Now that might mean they don't buy the newest iPhone 13, but they go for maybe the iPhone S, the cheapest uh, entry model, but it's still steady demand. What's not to like about that? More to the point, what might replace them? Even if anything went well and a competitor was suddenly able to um, come up with a, a better smartphone that looked and was more fashionable and was willing to compete with the iPhone, how would they build that same ecosystem of which iPhone is just one part. Now, Tim Cook succeeded for two reasons. The first is because he positioned Apple to ride the exponential wave of net-enabled innovation that we've seen over the last 10 years. That's what's allowed the firm to harvest revenues from all these new markets, opportunities, and services. And he's captured these customer revenues. However, the second element is because Tim Cook's smart and he's recognised what me and billions of other customers are. Hi everybody, my name is Bill and I'm a hopeless Apple addict. I can't resist, I've got iMacs on my desks, Mac Pros in a travel bag and on my um, yacht I've got iPads sitting around in all kinds of places in the house and look, it's an iWatch on my wrists. I've got loads of cloud space for all my docs and photos, and I've got an iMusic subscription. But the most important single thing I own in the world is this. It's my iPhone. I bought it new last year, and it's about to become obsolete because we've got an, an iPhone 13. I need to buy the new one. Think about how quickly the world is changing. Apple is just part of that. It happens to be a very successful part. 25 years ago, there was nothing like this smartphone. 25 years ago, none of the following existed. Streaming, Google, Facebook, Netflix, YouTube, Bitcoin, Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. Actually, I don't even know what Instagram is. Wikipedia, Androids, iPads, Gmails, Teslas, PayPals, WhatsApps, Messengers, Emojis, Zoom, FaceTime, Blackberries, actually they're dead now, Amazon Prime, Airbnbs, Ubers, Snapchats, LinkedIn, Reddit, Skype, I'm not sure anyone uses Skype either, Spotify, SpaceX, Podcasts, Robotics, Virtual Reality, Artificial Intelligence, only existed in sci-fi novels, Meatless Meat, 3 Tree Printing, look I could just go on, that's just a list of all the things that have changed in a very short time frame. And my iPhone services all of these for me. It makes my iPhone indispensable. On my iPhone, I can do all my banking, I can watch markets, I can answer the doorbell, I can send and receive on any and all of my multiple emails, I can blog and chat and order stuff. I could be filming this on my iPhone. I can turn on and off the lights. I can look at my photos, I can control the ovens down in the kitchen, I can listen to podcasts, I can listen to the radio, watch TV, I could watch a film if I wanted. I've even written the morning porridge on my iPhone. I can check where I am in the world. It's much easier than looking at a proper map. I can play games, I can do and listen to loads and loads of music on it, and I can even control the high-definition music that I play through my hi-fi. You know what? I can even phone people on my iPhone. But the thing is, will I always buy Apple? The threat to Apple is really threefold. Will Apple be able to remain at the centre of this chaotically evolving um, tech market? There are loads of possibilities and opportunities that we don't really even know about in terms of tech, cloud, fintech, and the Internet of Things. Now, I don't have a clue what tech marvels are going to emerge next that will make our lives better and yet more complex. 
Now, it is possible that Apple's current legislative battles over app costs for developers could send developers to other vectors to sell their services. But apart from Apple, where else would you go? Android is just part of the market. The second threat is that will Apple be allowed to remain so dominant by the regulators? Already it's under pressure through antitrust legislation. Are the courts likely to test Apple's monopoly of being Apple? The age of tech regulation to control data use is upon us. GDPR and child suitability rules are merely the first steps in what could change tech completely. And the third, of course, is the big one. Will the exponential development of web-enabled products continue? Or have we already peaked? Will a new revolution emerge? What if somebody makes the smartphone obsolescent overnight, the same way that the iPhone did to the CD player and the Sony Discman? Or is it more likely that if there is technology that could outcompete them, Apple will just buy it and bury it? What I do know is that nothing lasts forever. Empires rise and falls. Companies don't remain in the top 10 for very long. Apple has already long lasted longer than most companies, but who would bet against it today? Tomorrow? Well, that's a very different story. Apple's just one of the companies that I'm very interested in following and we'll continue to keep a very close eye on how it develops. Look forward to talking to you all next week when we'll have a completely different topic on Shard's Lightbite. Thank you all very much indeed.